Hi everyone, it's time for Sunday School again. This message is for Sunday, April the 11th, 2021. It's so good to be with you again and I'm back outside for this lesson. It's so beautiful this morning. I'm recording on Saturday morning for Sunday. Um, we're getting ready to go to an archery tournament here in a little bit. We'll be traveling to Hurricane, West Virginia, down in the southern part of the state. But it's a perfect day for this, um, just to be out with my friend Leanne and my husband Russ and just spend the day kind of celebrating kids, which is something that we love to do. Russ is the coach of the archery team and we've not been to a tournament in a very long time because of COVID. So we're really excited today that we get to do this. You know, last week was Easter Sunday and um, we were just so excited talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And now um, we might be saying, well, now what? What do we do now? What do we talk about now? And I think the disciples probably had that same feeling. Um, so we're going to talk today a little bit about trust, okay? Um, so how can we know that something is true? What if I told you that I had climbed Mount Everest? Would you believe me? Yeah, I don't think I'd believe me either. Um, I, of course, have not climbed Mount Everest. I haven't even climbed Seneca Rocks, although I'd like to. So that one's a little hard to believe. But what if I told you I brushed my teeth this morning? Would you believe that? Yeah, that's a little more easy to believe. Um, but you didn't watch me do it, so you kind of have to take my word for it that I brushed my teeth this morning. Um, what if I told you I have a Barbie sitting next to my iPad right here? Would you believe me if I told you that? Well, how do you know if I have a Barbie sitting right here? Well, if you were here, you would be able to see it. Or if I pulled it and showed you, there's a Barbie sitting right by my iPad. That belongs to my granddaughter, Carolyn. And she plays with them in the hot tub all the time. So now we can know for sure that I have a Barbie sitting next to my iPad. Well, what if I told you that I have something else and only one person would be allowed to see it or touch it? Could you know for sure that it was there? It might be a little trickier again. And would you believe that person if you didn't see it yourself? Well, in our gospel lesson today, someone had a hard time believing that Jesus had come back to life. He was having a hard time believing what the other disciples were telling him. So let me read to you from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples went together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So he appeared to the disciples. Now listen, this one starts in verse 24. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came to them. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, 
you may have life in his name. Well, that's a, such a great passage of scripture. And, and I feel, you know, I feel kind of like Thomas sometimes that because I didn't see Jesus, it's hard to believe sometimes that he was real. Ooh, I lost my pages. Give me a second. So imagine, that, okay, so the story of Jesus appearing to the disciples after Easter is so exciting to us. They watched him die on a cross and they were feeling so upset and sad and imagine how they must feel when they know he's come back to life again but thomas missed out he wasn't there in the room when jesus came to see them and he didn't see him personally he didn't believe his friends and what they told him about witnessing jesus and he promised them he would not believe it until he saw jesus face to face when jesus did show up later and he showed Thomas, his hands where the nails had been, and his side where the sword had pierced his skin. Thomas might have been embarrassed. But the neat thing is that Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believe. He commended people who believed in him without seeing him face to face. That means he's telling us, Good for you for believing in me, even though you haven't seen me face to face. We haven't physically seen him, and yet we still believe that he's real. So how? How do we know about Jesus? Well, the Bible is certainly one of those ways, the best way. We might hear about Jesus from other people, and that's great, but we have the Word of God, and that's the most important thing. We have the stories of the Bible, and we, we share those every Sunday with each other on Sunday School. You listen to them when Pastor Steve is preaching in church. Hopefully you hear about them in Vacation Bible School this summer or even other places that you've gone. And we know when we hear those Bible stories, we know that God's word is true. In order to trust someone or something, we have to know that it's trustworthy. God has most definitely proven himself trustworthy. He does what he says he'll do. His promises are real and his promises are true for us. So the Bible gives us great hope. We can't really see God as a person necessarily, but we see his evidence and we know he gives us life. The Bible is God's word given to us so that we can know and believe. Let's think for a minute about the evidence that we, we know where God is. I think there's evidence every time I come outside and I see the sky that's so blue and the clouds and the birds and that beautiful sunshine. I know that I see God when I see all of his creation, the trees and the flowers and the animals. And I know I see God when I see your faces. We also see God when things work in our lives. When maybe mom or dad is looking for a parking place and they find one easily, or they've lost their car keys and they find them. Those seem small, but those are evidence that God is real. I think God is real. We see that when, even when we lose a loved one, if we have lost somebody who has died, even though that hurts our hearts, we have comfort and we find peace later and I think that that is evidence that God is true and real and trustworthy. So those are all ways that God has proven himself to us. And I think that's an awesome thing. I'm going to do a little bit of a craft with you today. Um, just to remind yourselves of God, of Jesus' hands and feet where the nails were. So I'm taking a piece of construction paper. And while I'm talking to you, I'm going to trace my hand. Hopefully I don't get red pen on myself because I'm really bad about writing on myself when I do that. And I'd rather not have red pen on myself when we go on our trip today. I think I did okay. There's my big old hand. So I'm going to cut it out. And I actually think that we've done something like this in the past. But while I'm cutting this, I want you to think about um, some people or things that we could pray for. And I'm gonna put those, I'm gonna put the things that I'm thinking about on my hand that I'm cutting out. And so this is gonna be a prayer hand for me, but it's also gonna be a reminder to me that Jesus' hands
hands had nails in them when he was put on the cross. And it's going to be a reminder that Jesus died for me and for you. So when you trace your hand, make sure mom and dad help you to cut it out. I am not doing a very good job cutting this morning, but it'll be okay. So there's my hand. All cut. And in addition to this, I'm going to put a red dot on the center of the hand to remind me of the nail that went in Jesus' hand that nailed him to the cross. It would just be a good reminder for me. And I hope you're thinking about the things that you can put on your hand to pray for. I'm going to put my family on my thumb. I'm going to put our country. I'm going to put our church family. And so I'm just going to say F-U-M-C for First United Methodist Church. I'm going to pray for Pastor Steve specifically this week because he is such a good shepherd for us. So I'm going to pray for Pastor Steve. So I have my family, our country, our church, Pastor Steve, and I think I'm also going to pray for the school system. Um, not just my school in Bridgeport, but for all of the schools. We've had a lot of COVID cases at Bridgeport High School recently. And I'm not worried for myself because I'm fully vaccinated, but I do worry about our kids. And, um, and I, I want them to be safe, just like I want you all to be safe. So there are my um, things I'm gonna pray for this week. The nail in the center to remind me that Jesus died on the cross for me. And on each of these, on my thumb and my fingers, <clears throat> I've put the things I'm gonna pray for this week. My family, our country, my church family at FUMC, Pastor Steve, and our schools, and all of our students and staff in our schools. I'm gonna put this on my uh, wall in my room to remind me every morning when I get up to pray for these things. Well, that's all I have for us today. Will you join me in a prayer? Father, I thank you so much for the beautiful day that you've given us, for the noises of the outside, for a lawnmower, for birds, for dogs. I love your creation and all that is in it and the reminder of all of it that you are God and you are so good. We thank you for doubting Thomas because sometimes we really feel like him, that we doubt that you're real and we doubt who you are. And that's okay because your word says that blessed are those who believe without seeing. God, thank you that you give us evidence that you are real and thank you that we can trust you with everything about our lives. God, I love you and I ask you to bless these beautiful children and youth and adults on the other side of this video and let them know your comfort and your peace right now as you are with them. Thank you for them. Thank you for their impact in my life and thank you for letting me be a part of their lives. God, we love you so much and we thank you for the risen Lord, Jesus, our Savior. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.